Hello everyone, reporting today for first updates now, I'm Amhas, and with me here I've team 12887 Devolt Phobos from Chihuahua, Mexico. They were recently the winning alliance captain at the New Mexico State Championship, earning them a spot at the World Championship for this power play season. And they just have an absolutely fantastic team and robot. We're going to take a deep dive into all their hardware, software, game strategy, and more coming up on first updates now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for first students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Funds YouTube in February, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. All right guys, let's get started with your drive train. Uh, I'm sure like on, at first it just looks like a normal mechanic drive, but a team as skilled as yourself definitely has some more going on. So walk me through it, what's the hardware behind it and what makes it special? So basically, we use a Gobil de Straffer B5 chassis that is big enough for us to move with a lot of ability and to keep all of our odometry and electronics in a safe place. Sure, and so yeah, let's jump right into the odometry. So I assume you guys use it for your localization and autonomous, and is this like, what are you using for your odometry and like, are you using any libraries and how does it work? Yeah, so basically we use the classic runner library. So our autometry is specifically about the design. We we weren't able to get those small omni wheels, so we focus on doing our own design with the wheels of Andy Mark. So basically at first we had this design that was like very compact, but we really struggled with like uh the the durability of it seems like it really broke often so we decided to change it for this design and yeah about the software we will focus on using something simple but reliable so we we, we use roadrunner which helps us with the pathing and it allows us to reach up to six, six continents at the autonomous period sure and so uh, another thing i see with your odometry it looks like you guys have some servos at the bottom to pull them up so was this something that you had like the entire season like from day one you had this plan or was it that like you noticed your odometry was getting stuck on the ground junctions and then you decided to add it oh yeah of course uh the strings are something that we really are recently like we w wanted to try out going over the ground junction since it was something that was like limiting us during the delivery period so we tested by printing this 3d printed pulley by, well so this pulley uh, pulls these cables that hold the elementary inside or outside uh it was something we added after our first qualifier so it it was something that was really experimental going on to your intake there's definitely a lot of different intakes out there this season and you guys do have a unique one so walk me through it and like what went through it like do you guys have a lot of different iterations or was this like the first design you had and it just worked uh yeah of course so the intake was something we really tried off a lot during the season we started designing those classic clouds in on chips like we went through two different designs of clouds but then we stumbled upon a video that like really showed off how this rolling intake works and we really like its performance. So we wanted to try it out and we made a quick design in Unchief. Basically, like none of the cloud prototypes were ever built. So this is our first and only design that we actually built of the intake. Cool. It basically consists of machine plates, this architecture and those that hold the servos and the wheels in place. So basically, they they come it's down here and it comes down, yeah, and it grabs it. So basically, when it comes down, it kicks straight because we have right here a four ball catch. This four ball catch is in charge like uh, of keeping the intake straight, but at the same time, we wanted to add a little plot twist to this link catch, and we added a servo to this gear. So it has a mode where it is locked down, but it also has like this extra mobility so that we can save it when the robot is first placed on the field so it really helps us to stay within the 
18 inches limit and like also be versatile because we can like grab, grab cons like this, like this, or place them also with the intake deal tooth basically. Sure. And so does that, uh, like, does that pitch adjustment also help you pick up fallen over cones or do you guys have a different mechanism for that? Uh, we actually, thanks to our rubber wheels in our intake and thanks to its rubber linkage that allows us uh, take the intake barely to, to the ground so we can pick it and just move the chassis backwards and it lift the cone. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's a lot easier to do like on the foam tile like with more friction than just like the smooth table. But yeah, I mean, I've seen you guys do it in matches and in practice and it just looks absolutely fantastic. And so going into the Houston World Championship, I know you guys definitely having already been the winning Lions captain at a state championship are looking to do something similar at the World Championship. So do you have plans to change your intake or are you very happy with the performance of it? Uh, we're very happy with the performance of our intake. Uh, we're going to make some changes. The intake will, will stay uh, the same, but we're going to make some changes uh, for sliders, uh, first of all, because we have box rules, that ones that you can see in Home Depot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to change it for uh, Misumi Rails. So uh, hopefully it will work better. Yeah, uh, we're gonna change it because of the movement when the yeah. intake is up. Both a lot. Yeah, and to so, make, yeah, let's, make it more. Let's uh, let's jump right into your slides. So for your uh, lift system, have you had this like the entire season? Did you try out anything else? And how is it powered currently? Okay, uh, right now uh, the lift system is powered by two Andy Marmors. Uh, and each one, uh, well, the lift system is a casket. Uh, it's a casket system, which uh, helps us to uh, be uh, compact and also very efficient and uh, fast uh, of ext uh, during extending. So we uh, passed through various situations. Uh, on the past season, we use uh, these drawer slides. With each of uh, between each drawer slide, there was a a, a piece uh -huh. that holds every, every pulley. So like, it like an insert. Makes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it makes bigger all of the lift systems and also heavier. So uh, this is on we discover that we can drill hole, holes on the drawer slides and um, place these pulleys and also. All the, all the strings. Also, by making this, we pass through various iterations on these pulleys, each one being more, uh, being more, um, being more compact, but also uh -huh. um, more uh, stronger. Sure. It's, this was the first one. This was the second one. Uh, well, this is the last one we have. And it's very, it's big, but it's very strong. Um, yeah, and so I have uh, two questions for you guys. So first, you mentioned that you do cascade slide, uh, cascade rigging instead of continuous. So uh, what was the decision to do that? And are there any like disadvantages or like would you recommend teams to go with cascade slides instead of a continuous setup? Uh, we decided to use the cascade system uh, because we thanks that we use the box rolls we need to be fast and and consistent by the cycles so thanks to the system we can uh, leave all the sections of our slides at the same time so thanks to that it's quite fast quite fast so that's why we decided to use this system because in the past season we use a, a regular systems so it was Fast, but not that much that with the cascade system and are you guys using so are you using something for the return string and do you have any counter spring in, in your setup or is it just like one extension spring and you just use the motor power to hold it up at the end at the top uh, yeah basically we were trying to like add counter springing but when it comes down if you saw like if we went down it's pretty violently so we wanted to like add a spring there right there, but we weren't able to make it end compact enough. So so we discarded the, the idea. But we as of right now, it really works uh, pretty fine without 
any sort of este, return string, uh, the gravity helps us to bring it down so we don't need anything extra to to pull it down. But basically, yeah. So, sure. Oh. Sure. Yeah. No. That that's great. I mean, obviously, your guys' lift system works very, very consistently. So you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and before we jump into your turret, which I'm sure you guys are really excited to talk about, the last question I have is for your new, like for your world's robot, you mentioned that you want to go to Misumi slide. So are you going to use inserts in that design or are you again going to drill like the hole in the side of the slide and then mount the pulley there? Um, uh, yeah, for the Misumi slides, we were like kind of planning to place the, uh, the inserts like this, but we realized it, it was like a really sensitive operation, like bringing holes in such uh -huh. a small, small slide. So we decided to go for the inserts, like the things that go in between. So I was looking up for various inserts and I realized like the long robot inserts are pretty much the, the best design we can get. And we see it as something like really consistent and worth tested by many things. So I think we're going to opt for those inserts. Sure. The long robot is one. Sure, sure. All right, let's jump into your turret. It's really big, really smooth, and really fast. So walk us through the hardware, and then we'll jump into the software as well. Well, uh, our turret works thanks to uh, two sprockets. We have the principal one. Uh, is this one? We have this. We have two in case of the principal broke. It's made by acrylic and. It's got, it's got laser uh, to match perfectly the other sprocket that we have in the motor. Sure. Uh, so that's are, laser uh, cut? Yeah, okay. yeah, the acrylic one is laser cut. We actually have the Alice uh, Susan to can move smoothly the turret. And that's it's the one that receives all the, all the force when the intake and elevators uh, comes down. Sure. And so talking about the software behind it, what sensors are you using to like make sure your turret is very accurate and consistent? And then like what uh, do you guys have any like special algorithms that help you use it in teleop and autonomous? Uh, yeah, of course. So in the turret specifically, we have uh, an inquire plugin into the Neverest motor. So we are able, able to know whether it's at all times. Well, we have to make sure we always turn on the robot with the turret facing straight since the robot is like not absolute, but we are pretty happy with the results. In the software side, we use a PID controller with a motion profile. So basically, we we tried out first with only a PID controller. So it was like good enough, but trying to go to specific positions, like for example, where, where angles such as 13 or something. So basically, we added that extra, extra step of the motion profile. So we get more fine-grained control of the movement. So basically, it starts accelerating slowly. It reaches a peak, and it deaccelerates when it's almost reaching the end point. So it moves really smoothly. Like, uh, for example, in these movements, were completely automatic during the teleop period. So we're pretty happy with the software with, with, it, with this turret. Yeah, that's that that's amazing. And so in Teleop, do you guys have any automations with your turret that really help you score cycles? Because you guys have some of the fastest cycles I've seen this season. Yeah, of course we have two buttons that are in charge of uh, rotating the turret. So we have the two ninety degrees rotations to both sides. That was completely automatic. Uh, at the same time, we have the linear rails, the slides are also completely automated with your positions for each of the high, medium, and low poles. Uh, we also have an, an extra button that is in charge of returning the turret and the slide to the zero position in, right here to be able to pick up an, a new cone. So basically, we really have like pre-automatic control to make sure our driver doesn't have to actually care about the specifics of each movement. And basically, we just focus as much as as possible to be able to score fast and reliably. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And so before we end the interview, uh, it's my understanding that you guys have a very special name for your robot. So can you please talk to everyone about that a little bit and share the story with all the people watching? Nacho! Nacho. Well, Nacho is called this way because we love a certain movie called Nacho Libre. It is about a hero of Lucha Libre that 
well, inspires kids across the world and makes his story known to everyone. Even though he may not be <laughs> the best of all, he has the hearts of the people. Wow, yeah, that's, that's very inspiring. Thank you, guys. And so, Default Phobos, I'm really, really looking forward to meeting you guys again at the World Championship. I think you guys are just going to do amazing things, and I can't see, wait to see what you come with. And so, thank you very, very much for this interview. Reporting for First Updates now, I'm Ab Haas, and thank you all so much. Thank you. So Thank, you. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for first students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Funds YouTube in February, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.